Is it ready? <coughs> okay, we're continuing on and we are talking about calculating probabilities from an event. Um, earlier we just talked about how likely an event is to happen. Now we are going to find the probability in numbers. So rather than just describing it in words, how likely it is, very likely, highly likely or somewhat unlikely, we're now finding in numbers what is the probability of an event. Okay? And we'll also talk about uh, complementary events. If I forget, please remind me what to cover it in the end. So, as we talked about rolling a die, so all of you have some idea about how to find how likely an event is. So, we've talked about sample space. We're using the sample space, we find the total number of outcomes for an event. For example, what's the event here? When a six-sided die is rolled. So, rolling a die is an event. So the first thing you do before calculating the probabilities is you write the sample space. Are we clear with that? Okay, so I am going to write the sample space. Is that right? Have I covered all the possible outcomes? Uh, eyes on the board? Hands down? Now, have I used the correct brackets? Yes. Now, so probability is the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. What does that mean? We are finding what is the probability that when we roll this die, we roll a number 4. So, what's the total number of outcomes? So, from the sample space, how many outcomes are possible? So, that's your denominator. Out of those 6 outcomes, how many are favorable to this? We want the event that a number 4 is rolled. 1. Isn't 4 only one of the options? Yeah. 1 sixth. That's the theoretical probability. I've written, written the word here theoretical. Can anyone tell me, no one asked me, why have I written the word theoretical? Theoretical is like the theory behind how it works. Yes. Yeah, okay, yep, that's the theory behind it because we know there's one possible outcome that number four is rolled and there's six total, so four over one over six. So it was theoretical because the fact that it was and if you actually roll the dice six times, well done. So I'll repeat his answer that if that's just the theory behind it, that's what's likely to happen. But if I actually roll the die, does it mean that I'll roll it? So if I roll it six times, does it mean number four will, one, I will come actually once? No. Not necessarily. So theoretical probability is when we use our theory. In theory, this is it's supposed to happen. Experimental probability is, which we'll do next lesson, when we actually roll a die. But shouldn't they both be equal? No. Will they ever be equal to each other or close to each other? Think about it. We'll talk about it tomorrow when we do experimental probability. Okay? Now, so probability of rolling an even number. What's the definition of an even number? The number that can be divisible by two. Okay, divisible by two. I'm happy with that for now. How many even numbers are there? Three? So, three even numbers, and what's the total outcomes? Six. So, as I wrote here, write the probability as a fraction. We use this formula, and then we simplify if possible. Now, three and six, do they have a factor in common? Yes. Are they both divisible by three? Yes. All right, three divided by three is? One. And six divided by three is? Two. So, probability of getting an even number is half. So, even chance. Happy with that? Yes. Now, Complementary events. Complementary events are the events for whom the probabilities add up to 1. Or in simple terms, they are the only two possible outcomes. So one of them will happen. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question. Think before you raise your hands. Um, which cereal do you like? Give me the name of a cereal. Uh, cornflakes. Cornflakes. Someone else? Wheat Bakes. Wheat Okay. So, if I say the sample, um, the probability of students in this class of having cornflakes and the probability of students in this class having wheat bix are they complementary events? Together, will their probabilities add up to one? Think about it. Are these the only two outcomes that are possible? What about someone who didn't like cereal? What if someone had eggs? What if someone had Cocoa Pops for breakfast, like me? No, I don't <laughs> eat Cocoa Pops. Yes. Are they complementary events? No. No. So what would be an example in terms of having breakfast for this class? 
Two events that are complementary. They are the only two options. Well done. So if I say raise hands if you had cereal this morning. Hands down. Raise hands if you did not have cereal this morning. So together if I add the probability, should it add to one? Yes? So you either had cereal, you can put your hands down now, thank you. So you either had cereal or you didn't have cereal. So they are complementary events. Now, I would want you to design two events with rolling of a die that are complementary. Think about it now. Two events when you roll a die are complementary. Two events rolling a die that are complementary. Yes? Uh, the result being either odd or even. Yep, yeah, good example. The result is, did you roll an even number or an odd number? Are they complementary events? Yes. So you'll either get that or even or odd, right? Another event? Uh, wait, did die? Yes. Yeah. Um, the number being three or below or being four or above? No, that, they're not complementary. So number being three or below, four, four and above. Yep, yeah, that is, it, it could be four or above or three. Yep, yeah. yeah, happy with that? Yes? Uh, the number of primes to composites? Yep, prime. Oh, no. One well, one how one. about number one? So if you say it's a prime number or a composite number, prime is a uh, one is neither. What else? Okay, I'm going to write say an event. You have to tell me the complementary event for that. Rolling the number three. What's the complementary event of that? Rolling the number one, two, four, five, or six. Yep, or in simple terms, I'd say not rolling the number three. <laughs> yes? <laughs> Makes sense? So do we understand complementary events now? Yes. Walking to school and not walking to school. Complementary events. Doing your maths homework, not doing your maths homework. Uh, Getting a detention. <laughs> they are complementary events. Do we, do we understand that now? So complementary events together, they must, so one of them has to happen. So the probabilities of them happening added together will be one. That means one of them will happen. Are we clear on that? So there should be no other possible outcomes. Next one. Card is selected at random from a deck of cards. You'll all get a colored copy of uh, the deck of cards so you can see. We'll paste it in our summary books. Now, just um, to see if you, you actually are aware of what happens in a deck of cards. How many cards do we have? 52. 52. Are they divided into different colors? Yes. This is how many different colors? Two. Two. Red and? Wow. Right. Okay. So we have two suites of red cards, two suits of, suits of black cards. Now, what patterns are on them? The red ones are? Hearts and diamonds, clubs and spades. Yeah. Hearts and diamonds. Excuse my, excuse my bad drawing. Clubs and spades. In spades. Happy with that? So we have red cards that are hearts and diamonds. So this is hearts, that's diamond, this is clubs, and that's a spade. Are we happy with that? Now, each card has numbers starting from? Starting from? A. When did A become a number? Two. When? When? When did A become a number? Two. You have me as a teacher, and you think A is a number. What no. does it say? <laughs> no. Two. A is treated as one, but isn't is it a number? No. So if I say what's the number cards? No. What numbers do the cards start from? Oh, okay. Well done. They go from two to ten. Ten. Now it is important because we'll ask you. I can ask you to find the probability that you get a number card. A is not a number. It's treated as one for some games, but it's not a number, is it? Not in my eyes. Now, then after 10 we have Ace, yes, and then we have Jack, Queen and King. And sometimes Joker. Yeah, we don't include Joker in our normal 52 deck of cards. Now, Jack, King and Queen are called face cards. Can you tell me why? Please tell me, it's easy. They have faces. They have faces on them. Oh, they have Where? Who could have guessed? Joker. Now, we don't treat Joker in the 52 standard deck of cards. Okay? Now, is Ace a face card? Does it? Okay, whose Ace has a face on it? No. Is Ace a face card? No. Is Ace a number card? No. no. Ace is just Ace. 
A A A A A A A A A A A A A Thank you. I'll be clear on that now. So the number cards go from 2 to 10. Ace is just Ace. And the King, Queen and Jack are the face cards because they have their faces on them. I'll be clear. Now, so how many do we have? So that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 of each kind. 13 of hearts, 13 of diamonds, 13 of spades and 13 of clubs. Are we happy with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is this our sample space? Yes, the sample space would be writing all of that. I'm not writing it in technically but, sample space. It would be a waste of time if I write all the cards. Yeah, because you're not doing it squiggly. Like now, this is not a sample, so that's why it's yeah. not. I'm just telling you, and I will give you all a colored handout with the photos on it. Now, what is the probability that if you select a card at random, what is the probability that you're listening to me? Yeah. And what should it be? One. 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 The yeah. maximum we yeah. can have is one. Do you have to do more than maximum? No, no, no. I'm, I'm a maximum. All right. Shh. Thank you. No, I don't want the answer. I said quiet. Probability of getting a black card. Now, we have, so 13 in each, so we have 52 cards in total. So 52 in total. How many will be black? Won't half of them be black? Because 13 of clubs and 13 of spades. What's 13 plus 13? 26. So you either write this and then simplify it to half, or you use your brains, which you do have, that half of them are red, half of them are black, so probability of getting a black card is half. Are we happy with that? Yes. What's the complementary event of having a black card? Not having a black card or having a red one, right? Now, what's the probability of number two? Shh. So we'll have a two of di uh, hearts, a two of diamonds, a two of spades, and two of clubs. How many number twos do we have? Four. four. And what's the total? 52. Now, four and 52, they're both divisible by? Four. Four. Wait. Okay. Yeah. 13 times four is 52. So one in 13. Does that make sense? How likely is it? Not very, not very. Finding a face card. How many face cards? Three for three. each suit. So three for three for di uh, diamonds, three for hearts, three for clubs, three for spades. So how many is that? Twelve. Twelve. What's the total? Can they both be divisible by four? Four? Yes. Six. So three over thirteen. That's wait, no. Have I made a mistake? No. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, if you do not simplify, you don't get the answer mark. Yeah. So you must simplify. It is a techable topic. We're going to give you uh, an analysis task. So you will have your calculator. However, don't depend on it too much. Use your brain. You have one. Um, any questions on complementary events, on finding the theoretical probability? Why is it a theoretical probability? Are we actually taking the cards out? No. We're just basing it on the sample space that this is the total number of outcomes. This is the how many times that outcome is possible that we're after. Just put it as a fraction. That tells us how likely it is. But if we actually do an experiment, it might not be the same. So tomorrow, or next lesson, before you point out, uh, we'll talk about experiment probability. We'll actually roll some dice and we'll see what happens. And in what cases will our experimental probability be matching with our theoretical probability? Okay, think about it. That's it, get on with your work.